Well, we're back covering, uh, well, we introduced this last week, and it's the, uh, we're calling it the Bridge Over the River Y. And I can't figure out why you why named not? it that. <laughs> well, there, and there is no river there. Why is there, you know, so why? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out as we go. Anyway, uh, because the, the project we're working on isn't just the Bridge Over the River Y, it's the whole north end of the railroad. Right. Which includes this little gully here that has a truss bridge uh, going over the top of it. So we're actually dealing with building up this entire section, scenery, structures, everything. And uh, this week we're actually moving on to the cement scenery. Uh, is there a drought? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose with cement scenery there would be some runoff issues. I guess. Anyway, uh, the entire railroad, uh, if you've been following along with this, is built up on bench work, even though it's an outdoor railroad. And it has scenery somewhat similar to what you'd find on a regular model railroad, except that because it's out in the yard, it has to be made out of durable materials uh, like cement. Uh, yeah. In, in this case, we're actually using mortar. Uh -huh. Mortar mix from Homey Depot. Yes. We're doing kind of a composite scenery. The railroad itself is kind of composite. It's mostly Utah, Colorado narrow gauge, but even uh, Mexicano here. Uh, any three foot narrow gauge, we're, we're pretty open to that. And so the scenery itself has a, well, let's just say an open interpretation too. <laughs> So uh, there are two areas on the stuff that I previously did where the mortar has just crumbled and come apart. And I've been at a loss to understand why in just two small areas, the whole thing has just crumbled and dissolved. Uh, some people on here said it's because I've placed it directly over the uh, extruded styrene insulation, but it, it's worked just fine in most places. But in two places, the cement has just crumbled and fallen apart. And one of those two places is an area where it wasn't over extruded styrene, but was actually over cinder block. According to the source of all human knowledge, uh, YouTube, as I watched people using mortar, uh, professional brick masons say that what will cause this, and the only thing that will cause this, is an inappropriate mixture of sand and lime, uh, sand and cement in your mortar mix. If the proportions aren't right, then it's going to crumble like this. But we've just been buying pre-mixed mortar at Home Depot in the big 80, 90 pound bags, whatever it is. So that shouldn't be an issue, but I have a theory and I, I think I may have figured this out. I'm just using a plastic cup to scoop the mix out of the bag and mix it directly. If the mix has separated inside the bag and the cement has come to the top and the sand to the bottom, that could account for this. So from this point on, I'm going to dump the entire bag into a plastic bin and make sure it's well mixed up before using it. Well, the scrabbly stuff looks really neat. Is there a way to repurpose that? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I, I've been experimenting. Oh. And uh, the key is to save all this stuff. Right, because it's quite natural the way it's flaked off there. It just turns into a, yeah, a natural looking stone. Absolutely. And then, then, then uh, what I do is I put down some fresh cement and just kind of mix the whole thing together into a, a big glop and, and put it in place. Ah. Uh, we'll come back to that here in just a minute. Now another thing I need to do is finish off the top of the cinder block wall. I knocked away all of the decorative block that was up here because, well, it just doesn't work very well with the railroad. And actually, I only knocked away the decorative block where it's directly above the railroad. I want to continue with the decorative block from this point down, so I'm actually going to tie my scenery into that top decorative block so that from here to the west it continues. Now I need to finish off the top of the wall um, and then add scenery to this whole area, turn it into mountains. So the first thing I had to do, and it turned out to be a much larger project than I was giving it credit for, 
is just knock away all of the existing mortar and clean this area up so that I could add scenery to the top of it. When a properly mixed mortar is applied to the cinder block, it's darn tough to break it loose. There were a lot of places here where I, I couldn't break it loose at all. The best I could do was just chisel away as much of the mortar mix as I possibly could and call that good enough. So this is the new technique that I'm using for mixing my mortar, and I, I hope it's going to work out better. I've dumped the entire bag of mortar mixture into a tall kitchen trash can, and then I made sure that was all well blended, and now I'm scooping that mixture out into my mixing tray. And I'm double checking to make sure that my mixture seems to be of a proper consistency as I go. Now last year when I first started doing this, I was just putting the cement mixture up here in its natural gray state and then painting that with a uh, uh, exterior grade latex paint. Now I'm actually adding color into the mixture before I put it up. I'm still going to be adding color using exterior grade latex paint, but at least this gives me a nice base color to work from. Uh, makes it much simpler going forward. I've been buying the color off of Amazon just in their smallest available package and it comes in these little foil envelopes and I've got uh, a brown, uh, an orange and a black and I just sort of mix those together to try to achieve a color that I think is going to work. And then uh, adding the water into the mixture here. I put a little too much water. Working in these small batches, it's kind of difficult to figure out exactly how much water to add. So in this case, I just had to add a little bit more mortar mix to thicken it up a bit. It's, uh, you, you know when you've hit the right point. It's either way too dry and, and sticky or way too wet and sloppy. And somewhere right in the middle is this magic point where everything's just right. We went by the garden center at Homey Depot in search of something that I could use as blocks on top of this wall. And they had these pavers and a lot of the ones on the pallet were broken. And I said, how much for the broken ones? And they said, I oh, can just take those. So we walked out of there with about 300 pounds of broken pavers. And then I further broke them into the right shapes that I needed to finish off the top of this wall. Most of what I'm using here are about half size pavers. I just took a chisel and broke them right down the middle into half sizes for the for the bottom layer here just to completely seal off the top of the cinder block wall. It really works best if you can sort of slap this mixture down onto the cinder block. In this case if I do that it'll go all over the place. But you need to press it down into the cells of the cinder block the best that you can uh, to ensure that it's really attaching itself to the cinder block. And then pressing the cut paver stones down into that mixture and then actually all in one go here coming back with more mortar mix and put putting that over the top of this whole thing getting it down into the cracks between the pavers uh, to ensure that you've really got a, a tight bond here between the, the pavers that are on top of the wall and the wall itself. You've got to work pretty fast because it's surprising how quickly this mortar mix starts to set up on you. And when you're doing this kind of thing where you're hooking everything together, you really need a wet mixture. Sometimes when you're just sort of applying decorative stuff over the top, if it starts to set up, that can actually work for you as long as it doesn't set up too much. But boy, you need a really gooey mix here in order to hook all of this stuff together. And so it actually involves moving as quick as you possibly can. Another reason why I'm working in pretty small batches. Well, now this makes me want to go to Cold Stone and get some ice cream. And it makes me want to lick the spoon. A little bit, yeah. Isn't that weird? I mean, it's supposed to be cement. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to actually eat any of this stuff. It uh, might set up where you don't want it to. Exactly. Ooh. Stick to your ribs there. But it, it actually looks rather yummy in a gooey state like this. Chocolate. Hey, 
but you, you find that you can manipulate it and shape it and uh, it takes some practice and right. it takes some figuring. <laughs> But you can start to actually shape this into some pretty decent looking scenery. There's a whole bunch of different finishes that you can sort of put on there. Sometimes I like that really smooth uh, stone look. And other times I like that sandy finish. I do too. And and I achieve that just by, once it starts setting up, I just go over it with my fingers. Oh. And it, it roughs up the surface and it brings the sand up to the top and it just gives it that rough appearance like that. And I like that a lot. It looks natural. Now in this area right here, the area over to the right, there was a big crack going down through there. And while I was working with that darker color, I just took some of that darker stuff and worked it down in there with my fingers. And I, I really like that look. Yeah. Looks to me like there's moisture coming through there, like groundwater seeping through the crack. I love the look. I do too. And I'm planning to do this over the whole thing. At some point, mix up darker colors and work it down into the cracks that way. Because I, I think that turned out great. Yes. By accident. It's accidental <laughs> art. There you go. Each section has come out, you know, a slightly different color because of just the way I'm coloring the cement. But I'm not overly concerned because my goal is still to come back and add further color with uh, outdoor house paint. Right. Latex house paint. And there will be uh, railroad uh, track ballast down in here between the ties and just some kind of loose material at the bottom of the cliff. When you're working outdoors, everything doesn't have to be hooked down. You can just have loose stuff. Yes. Now, another thing that I'm doing here is I've taken some of these one gallon plant pots that plants are delivered in when you buy them at the nursery, and I'm building five of them into the wall so that I have a place where I can place trees. I'm not gonna plant the trees directly in these pots. I'm just going to take other pots and drop them inside these pots so that I can easily remove the trees for pruning them or replacing them or whatever comes up. But I'm going to have five of these empty pots just built right into the wall. There's a chunk of paver down inside the pot and it's preventing the other pot from sliding all the way down in. But normally it slides all the way down in and you can't even see the edge. Now any place that the mortar mix is being placed directly on the cinder block or the pavers, it seems that it's going to work quite well. But any place that it's over uh, an area where it isn't going to attach itself very strongly to what's underneath, uh, over the styrofoam, or should I say extruded styrene insulation, for example, or over this roofing material, if it's, if it's in a more free-floating state, then it has to be reinforced. And what Karen's sister put me onto is using cheesecloth because she's doing this same technique. And uh, rather than using the difficult-to-use wire mesh, uh, she just uses cheesecloth. And I've used that in a few places, and I'll be darned if that doesn't work just fine. It keeps the material from cracking or coming loose. And, reinforces it because mortar mix without something to uh, to reinforce it that way will crack and come loose so you have to make sure that it has some kind of material preferably that uh, wire mesh inside it to keep it from cracking I was thinking in this area I probably should have put some reinforcement around the plant pot to make sure it didn't crack in the area where it goes around the plant pot but as it happens, it, it worked just fine. As long as it's on there uh, thick and as long as it's attached to something like these pavers to keep it from being able to crack, it, it seems to do just fine. Another thing that I'm doing to reinforce it is I'm adding these little shreds of fiberglass. You can buy that at Home Depot. It's, uh, it's meant for this exact purpose, reinforcing any kind of cement or mortar mix so that it has more strength and is less likely to crack. One significant problem with it is once the mortar mix is set up, you can actually see these little fibers sticking up out of the mortar mix and they'll sparkle under just the right lighting conditions. I tried burning them away with a torch and that didn't really work. 
but uh, as I'm going to come back with more out, outdoor grade latex house paint, I think it's going to cover all that up and that shouldn't be an issue. Now working in small batches this way, it's important to really do your shaping as you go because you're not going to be able to come back once this is even partially set up and, and do a lot of shaping with it. So as the mix goes through all of its different variations and sets up, you have to keep shaping and keep shaping and keep shaping. While it's wet and gooey, then there's a lot of shaping that you can do in terms of getting the overall shape just right. But then as it sets up, you find that you can kind of carve into the slightly set up material and, and achieve different effects. And then even once it's mostly set up, you'll find that you can come in and really carve the mostly set up material and achieve a whole different effect. This really opens up the surface of the cement and leaves a, a really porous surface behind. And, I'm concerned that that absorbs water and then because of our wicked winters around here that that's going to cause freezing and, and cracking and breaking. Uh, so one of the last things I do here is apply a, a water seal over the top of the whole thing. Unfortunately that produces a rather glossy finish which I don't care for but it does gloss off after a little while and goes back to a more natural appearance. But I'm afraid where it's really open up, uh, opened up and, and porous like this, that uh, it's really going to absorb water like a sponge. And in spite of all of your best efforts, you have to understand that it is going to break down, it is going to crack, it is going to require repairs from time to time, and that's just the nature of garden railroading, that it's, it's rather maintenance intensive. Uh, it takes a while to build it, but it also requires uh, many days throughout the year to repair uh, damage caused by the elements. Well, I think it looks really nice. I love that grainy, rough exterior. Yeah, once you get it kind of dialed in, man. <laughs> I, it reminds me of Echo Canyon a little bit. It really does. It has that same, I don't know, scrabbly, composite yeah. loose. Yeah, wind-blown, uh, yeah, yeah. smooth cliff faces. It, yeah, it does. And the stuff that's kind of loose and fall into the bottom of the cliff is really an important element. It really adds a lot to the look. We mentioned earlier that we would get back to working with that scrabbly material that falls to the bottom of the cliff. Yeah, actually all this crumbly stuff that's come loose is a real asset, so I want to pick it up. I uh, clean out the shop vac, make sure there's nothing else in there, and then I come in with my shop vac and just vacuum all of this stuff up. And then later on, I can take this loose material, uh, mix up a really wet batch of material and, and stick it back at the base of the cliff and then press all this loose scrabbly stuff into that, that goopy material and let it harden. And then some of it's gonna stay loose, but uh, outdoors it really doesn't matter. Uh, you can always clean this up for doing maintenance and then just put it right back where it came from. This is what I do with track ballast as well. We're using kitty litter for track ballast and I just spread that everywhere. And then when I need to do maintenance, I use the shop vac and pick up all of the kitty litter into a clean shop vac and then just dump it back onto the railroad and spread it out and put the ballast right back where it came from. But you can see here all of that scrabbly material at the base of the cliff. This is the stuff that's not on the loose and is actually pretty well stuck in place. But I can augment that by just dumping more scrabbly material and have it there on the loose. And that's also what we're using for ore here at the Nevermind. The tipple is just full of kitty litter. And I can open the, the gate and allow that to pour out into a gondola car and then uh, either use the shop vac to clean that up or uh, take the gondola car and just dump it into the bin at the top of the building here. Just take the roof off and dump the material right back where it came from. Just sort of a fun thing to do. And if it gets all over the place, it doesn't matter. That's one of the assets of garden railroading is you can have a lot of loose material. I just love the look of this truck and all of this other equipment out here. Yeah, our good friend Steve Strubble 
he just keeps making fun things for the railroad, and that truck is one of the things that he made. Oh, I, I can't believe he did. I, I just, I look at that, and it's like, what? How did he do that? It looks so great here at the mine. It does. Of course, we take it in when we're not running. We don't leave it out here. Oh, well, no. Uh -uh. You know, the spiders would make off with it Oh, or uh, they really would. You'd come out there, and a squirrel would be driving it, and spiders would be throwing candy from the back. And this is that area where the whole thing just let go and slumped off. And I took the scrabbly stuff and, and built up a hillside underneath there and house paint and, and rock stain and everything and colored it in. I, I love the look of it, just like that. Yeah, you know, there's a science lesson there. Yep, Geology 101. Steve gave us a bunch of dead sagebrush that he found out in the West Desert and said, you know, these will make great looking dead trees on your railroad. And I completely agree. So I thought, you know, I think if I just stick one of them in the cement here in the mortar mix and cement it in place, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And sure enough, once the, the mortar mix is set up, this tree is really a permanent part of the cinder block wall at this point. And it looks great. This little section right here is actually a foundation for a building. I haven't quite figured out exactly what the building's going to be, but the lower floor of it is leftover panels from the Nevermind, and it just sits right here, and eventually there'll be a wood building on top of it. I'm not trying to create any kind of uh, actual stone foundation or anything. I just want this to look like it's it's intentionally built up and then it's it's got this building on top of it. So less of a scrabbly bit of dirt and more of just kind of a, a steep stone foundation underneath this building. And then I'm putting a bit of concrete mix inside the building and pressing this down into it. That makes it so the building can easily be picked up and removed but it also sets down in there and pretty much locks in place so the wind doesn't blow it away. We have had some incidents of things getting completely blown off the railroad. Uh, we get some vicious winds once in a while, so trying to keep this in place is going to be a, it'll be a commitment. Everything has to be well locked down. Right. This area directly beneath the pine trees, I want to feel more like it's a it's earth because the pine trees are growing up out of it. So where most of this seems like stone, this area over here I want to feel more like uh, an earthen material up on top of the stone. Here again, it's just sort of an experimentation. Try a little of this, try a little of that. And a lot of times when you're doing something artistic, it is just kind of by accident. Right, and sometimes it turns out really cool. Yeah, check this out. I think that looks like dirt. I think it does. I also had to rig up a drip irrigation system to feed the trees up here, but that's a, that's a subject for a future video. Mostly have the cement scenery all worked out, still some details to do, but we're ready now to move on to the wooden truss bridge over the gully, or, <laughs> or the River Y, yes. as we've been calling it. But um, that will be our upcoming video, is uh, beginning construction and design on the wooden truss bridge over the River Y.
And I hope you're going to want to follow along with all of this. And so if you're not a subscriber, please become a subscriber to the channel. You might even consider clicking the join button, which sends a few dollars our way. But at the very least, uh, hit the upcoming subscribe button. Zoink right there, the subscribe button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. Right. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. See ya. Bye.